we showed you how to make pasta from scratch. Now let's get a little more specific and talk gnocchi, the light and pillowy potato dumpling of your dreams. We'll show you how to get that perfect texture and teach you how to make two classic sauces to pair with it, a creamy pomodoro and a rich and delicious brown butter sage sauce. This is how to make the best homemade gnocchi. To make the perfect gnocchi, you only need potatoes, eggs, flour, and salt. Which seems pretty simple, but like most things, the devil is in the details. Here's what we mean. After a bit of research, we found the master ratio for the perfect serving of gnocchi. One fourth teaspoon of salt, one large egg yolk, one pound potato, and one fourth cup double O flour. The perfect serving of gnocchi. But it gets even deeper than that. First, don't just grab any potato. We recommend using russet potatoes. These potatoes are high in starch, which means they'll produce a lighter and fluffier dough. And we are chasing that perfect texture, right? Right. Pierce your potatoes with a fork so they can release steam and then roast until tender. Ready to have your world rocked? If you want to get perfect gnocchi, bake, don't boil. Potatoes are super absorbent, and they'll take on too much moisture during the boiling process. This means you'll need more flour when making your dough, which will weigh your gnocchi down, and we don't want that. We're looking for a light, pillowy texture, and a super dry potato gets us there. Always weigh your potatoes raw, as the weight will change when moisture is released during the cooking process. So we bake, 425 degrees Fahrenheit, about 40 minutes. It's that easy. Now that your potatoes are done, just scoop those insides right out. You can process them with a potato masher, a strainer, your fists. Um, we wouldn't recommend that one, actually. But what we do recommend is using a potato ricer. Now, we know not everyone has one of these, but it's the best way to work with your potato. Pushing it through a strainer or using the potato masher will overwork your potatoes, giving your gnocchi a gummy texture, and we really don't want that. After you've riced them, let the potatoes cool. Releasing some of the steam will get rid of excess moisture, and the less moisture you have, the less flour you'll need, and the less flour you need, the lighter texture you'll get. Easy. And speaking of flour, it's time to get to our dough. There's a big debate in the gnocchi community. Yes, that is a thing, about using eggs or not, and we land on the side of using them. The eggs make the dough easier to work with, and your gnocchi are more likely to hold their shape when boiling. If you're new to making gnocchi, it also gives you the structure and stability you need when first starting out. Think about the egg as someone holding your hand. Whisk the egg yolk and drizzle it evenly across the potato mixture. You want to do this when the potato is cooled so that your hot potatoes don't cook your eggs. Using a bench scraper, chop the mixture to evenly distribute the egg yolk. We found a noticeable difference between all-purpose flour and double O flour. And while AP can create a pretty tender gnocchi, double O flour is the clear leader. It's really finely ground and gives our gnocchi a lighter texture than the AP. That's a pretty good reason to use it, I'd say. Sift your flour over your potato mixture. Sifting it helps with distributing the flour evenly, and it helps you not overwork your dough then sprinkle the salt across the top. Using the bench scraper, bring the mixture together until a firm mass forms. Gently fold the mixture over itself to fully coat the potatoes in egg and flour. We can't stress enough the importance of not overworking your dough. Don't do it. But if you don't bring your dough together completely, it will fall apart when you go to boil your gnocchi. So this is really all about finding that sweet spot between tough and tender. Once the mixture forms a smooth ball, roll the dough into an eight inch log. If your dough is sticky, add just enough flour to make it workable. But remember, flour will weigh down our gnocchi, so be very light-handed with this. When you're finished, your dough should be soft, supple, and a little bit sticky. This is the fun part. Cut a two inch piece from the log and using the palm of your hands, roll the piece into an eight inch rope with about a one inch diameter. Using your bench scraper, cut one inch pieces, rolling in the flour as needed so they don't stick. Repeat with the remaining dough. Once your gnocchi is cut, you can go straight to boiling, or you can take a little extra time and give your gnocchi these beautiful ridges. We didn't find a huge difference in how well a smooth or textured gnocchi holds its sauce, but it looks damn good, so we went for it. We used a pasta board for these. You just place your gnocchi on it, press down, gentle now, roll it, and flick. 
It's really that easy. And if you don't have a pasta board, you can just use a fork. If you go with this method, just be careful about how much pressure you use, as pressing down too hard can cause your gnocchi to break. This looks great, and it's actually kind of therapeutic too. Finally, it's time to get your gnocchi cooking. Bring a large pot of salted water to a boil. Place the gnocchi into water and cook until they begin to float. That'll take about three minutes. When the gnocchi floats to the surface, they're done. Stir them once so they don't stick, but don't get too crazy because they might break. Now the hard part is done, so let's get saucy. You can experiment and get really fancy with your gnocchi sauces, but we're gonna show you how to keep it simple and make the two we think are the absolute best. First up is the Pomodoro, which is a classic tomato-based sauce. It's velvety, it's creamy, it's easy to make, and it's so delicious. I just can't get enough of this sauce. Heat your olive oil in a large saucepan over medium heat. Add the onions and cook until it begins to turn golden brown and caramelized. This should take about 10 minutes. Add the garlic and red chili flakes to the onions and continue cooking until fragrant, about three minutes. Toasting the red chili flakes here instead of adding them in at the end will allow the flavor to incorporate better in the sauce. You'll get a little kick of spice in every bite this way. This process is called blooming. Add the tomatoes, oregano, and salt, and bring to a boil. This seriously looks so good. I wish you guys could smell this, but you'll understand when you make it yourselves. You've gotta make it, you have to. Remove the sauce from the heat and add the chopped basil. Now, use a hand blender to blend the mixture until smooth. Return the sauce to a medium low heat and stir in the heavy cream. Make sure your heavy cream is room temperature or else it'll curdle when you add it, and no one wants that. Continue cooking until your sauce is thickened slightly. This should take about three minutes. Now all that's left to do is pour your sauce over the cooked gnocchi. Garnish with basil and you're ready to eat. This tastes so delicious. I mean, seriously, you have to try this. The only thing that might be better than the Pomodoro is this brown butter sage sauce. It's so rich and comes together in under 10 minutes. This is all you need to make a brown butter sage sauce. You're gonna start by browning some butter. Place the butter in a medium saucepan over medium heat. Melt it until the butter begins to turn golden brown and smells nutty. Be sure to stir frequently, then you'll get, you know, blackened butter, not browned. Add the sage and red chili flakes to the brown butter and remove the pan from the heat. Keep stirring until the sage and chili flakes are lightly toasted. Stir in the lemon zest and the salt. This seriously smells so good. Now just add your gnocchi to the sauce and toss it until it's completely coated. That's it. The texture is so pillowy, so light, and it absolutely just melts in your mouth. That might be one of the best sauces you'll ever try. It's absolutely heavenly. To finish it off, just grate some Parmesan cheese on top and voila, that's how you make the best homemade gnocchi. That brown butter sage, I mean, forget it, it's the best. When you try this recipe for yourself, you're gonna feel like a total gnocchi pro, guaranteed. Oh yes!